The Honorable Richard Cashin is a labor leader and community activist who advanced the rights of inshore fish harvesters and transformed the social fabric of those living in rural Newfoundland and Labrador in ways that are still being felt by the industry today. For his efforts to improve the lives of rural fishermen and his lasting impact on the industry, this year, the Lifetime Achievement Award goes to the Honorable Richard Cashin. In the 1970s, fishermen were sort of at the hands of the fish plant operators who bought their fish, decided what the fishermen would be paid, and frequently fishermen were indebted to them and uh, had to continue to deal with them in order to manage their debt situation and couldn't really negotiate uh, fair returns for the risk they were taking going to sea and for the effort they were making and the hardness of, of that life. For women in the fishery, they mostly worked in fish plants. Fish plant workers uh, were not covered by minimum wage laws in the province, so they were paid less than minimum wage. Rick really got started dealing with the fishermen when he uh, made a claim against the electric reduction company that operated a plant at Long Harbor and had polluted Placentia Bay and affected fishermen greatly. He was a, a young man at the time, I think in his early 30s, and Des McGraw was a Catholic priest in a small community on the Northern Peninsula and saw the conditions that people uh, were having to, to work under. Two of them got together and decided that they would take on trying to uh, create circumstances where fishermen would be more fairly treated. They organized tens of thousands of harvesters and fish plant workers into a union. It was the biggest uh, organizing feat in Canadian labor history. Once they achieved uh, that, uh, that status, they were able to be, to successfully negotiate fair returns and improve salaries for fish plant workers. Fish harvesters, plant workers, all of a sudden had a voice, they had collective power. And I think without that, many of those rural communities would not be there today. To see, you know, in many cases, women at bargaining tables, it, it changed so much. Richard was a lawyer and he'd been a member of parliament uh, before that. And Rick saw this as his cause and he was most effective at it. A great number of the fishermen saw him as a hero of the day, of course. He knew that to make change for harvesters, he had to be with them and to understand what they were going through. And if you're going to change the shape of this province, you don't change it at the top. You change it among the working people. He could be extremely persuasive and he could rile up a crowd like not many people could. I worked for John Crosby for a lot of years and he and Richard, of course, had lots of moments of uh, adversarial um, um, back and forth, but they had a mutual respect for each other, a deep respect for each other. On July 2nd, 1992, when Mr. Crosby announced the Grand Fish Moratorium, and a very distressing time, obviously, for our province, for our fishers and our plant workers. They met, they resolved to remedy the problem, to work together for the common good. We ended up with, you know, a massive compensation program for harvesters, which allowed us to live and fight for another day. I mean, his whole life is really a lesson in determination and guts. He made a major, major contribution, and that's entirely deserving of uh, recognition in terms of a Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs>